In an earlier video in this IIS 7 series, we installed PHP and we configured IIS 7 so that IIS 7 was able to serve up our PHP content. The fact is though, it's highly unlikely that your PHP applications that you write or the PHP application that you source elsewhere, they'll have a database backend and it's also very probable that that database will be MySQL. So in light of the fact that PHP and MySQL work so well together, Let's see how we can install MySQL on a Windows Server 2008 machine since it's something that we'll be using in future IIS 7 videos. Now firstly you are going to require a copy of MySQL and you can head off and download that from mysql.com. So to save time I've already gone ahead and I've downloaded the installation file and I've put it on my desktop here. So we'll go and double click on it. And as you'd expect, it's going to start up an installation wizard, so we'll click Next. Now we can perform a typical, a complete, or a custom installation. And a typical installation is fine for our purposes here, so I'm going to leave the default and we'll choose Next. And then we'll click Install. Now it won't take long to install. MySQL it is a quick installation process, so we won't bother pausing the video. And in fact, there you can see that it's finished. And we've got some advertising here telling us about MySQL's enterprise subscription. So we'll click Next. We'll ignore that for now. And then Monitoring Service. We'll click Next again. And we'll leave this checkbox here selected. And that's to start configuring our MySQL server once we click Finish. And this will start up a new wizard, which for some reason always appears down in the bottom right corner. A bit annoying, but not life-threatening. So we'll click Next to get this wizard going. We're going to leave the default here at a detailed configuration. We'll click Next again. And here we'll need to specify what type of server configuration that we want to run with. And what you select here is largely going to depend on what sort of resources you want to allocate to MySQL. So if we were to choose the first option, Developer, it's going to use as little resources as possible. Server Machine in the middle is when you need good performance from MySQL, but other applications are also going to live on the same machine. And dedicated, this is when you have MySQL on a machine, and that's pretty much about it. Well, since IIS is on this machine as well, and we do need MySQL to coexist with it, we're going to choose the middle option here. We'll create a server machine, and we'll click Next. Now we can configure the database usage to be multifunctional, transactional, or non-transactional. And in most cases, you're going to leave the default here at multifunctional. So that's what we'll do. We'll click Next. Now here we can tell the wizard where we want MySQL to place its InnoDB table space, which is its data file. And you can change this if you like to point to a different folder or a different drive. And if you have a fault tolerant drive, that's a good idea to put it there. But I'm going to accept the defaults here. We'll just click Next. And here on this screen, we'll need to decide how many concurrent connections to our server that we want to allow. Now by default at the top here, the Decision Support option. This is for a database that won't require a lot of connections all at the same time, and it assumes up to a maximum of 20 connections to our database at a single time. Now our next option here is for Online Transaction Processing, and this assumes around 500 active connections to your database, and finally, we've got a manual option here whereby we can enter in an approximate value of how many connections we expect to have. Now, since this is a web server, and as it stands, web servers, if they're popular, you can expect a lot of connections. So I'd definitely be going with the middle option here or the manual option and then setting the value as high as we need. But for my lab, any of these are fine. I'm going to choose the middle one and we'll click Next. Now here we're going to leave our defaults to enable TCP IP networking and to enable strict mode, which by the way is better for security, but if you are running older MySQL applications, you might find that enabling this strict mode does break your application. So bear that in mind if you start having problems. Now also do take note of this port number 3306 as it may require you to open this port on your firewall so that people can connect to the server. All right, well, we'll click Next. Then we'll need to define our default character set. In most cases, you can probably go with a standard one here. But in a more diverse company, you might prefer the second option here for different languages. Now I'm going to leave the default and click Next again. 
Now you can see here we're going to install MySQL as a Windows service. And we're also going to check this box here to include the bin directory in the Windows path. That way we can call these commands from the command prompt if we need to. So I'm going to ensure that both of these boxes are checked and we'll launch our MySQL server automatically. So we'll click next and we'll need to enter in the root password for our MySQL server. So we're going to enter in a password here and we'll type it in again just to confirm it. Now we won't be enabling root access from remote machines and neither will I create an anonymous account as both of these things will lessen the security on this server. So we'll click next and we're ready to go. So we'll click execute and the configuration of MySQL will begin. All right, and that's it. It only takes a few moments for MySQL to complete and then you're ready to roll. So we'll click finish. So we hope you've enjoyed this video and would like to thank you for watching.